Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Don Shoemaker and today we are doing the fourth petition in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And our setting for the beginning of our study is located in the Santa Ynez Valley in one of the many, many beautiful wineries that you find here. I'm reading from Psalm 104, which is my favorite psalm. The first nine verses have to do with God the Creator and from verse 10 to the end of the psalm, we deal with God, the caregiver and the caretaker of everything that he has made. I begin with verse 10 in Psalm 104. God makes springs pour forth in the ravines. It flows beneath the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench the thirst. The birds of the air nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread that sustains his heart. And then we're told of God's care of the animal kingdom in verse 21, the lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. And then we see later in the psalm how God cares for all of his creation and what he provides. Verse 27, these all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. And then verse 31 says, May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. God truly rejoices and enjoys giving food to his creation, man and animals and everything else. Well, we are away from the beautiful vineyards and back home in Long Beach, and we continue in the petition, Give us this day our daily bread. It is found in Matthew chapter 6. And verse 11 it's the fourth of the six petitions in the Lord's Prayer and I want to take this petition and analyze it one point at a time and here's the first point we confess God as the gracious source of our food when we pray this petition Psalm 104 is my favorite Psalm and it lets us know that God is the first link in the food chain science cannot teach this but faith can and it is more important for us to know that God is the first link in the food chain than to know anything else about the food chain. In Acts chapter 14 and verse 17, another one of my favorite verses, we learn that God has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. And what we need to see here is that God is not speaking just to Christians. He is talking through the Apostle Paul to non-Christians. These are nature gifts that come from God to everyone, whether we believe in him or not, or whether we thank him or not. Martin Luther said, here we pray especially for the gift of a thankful heart when we say, give us this day our daily bread. Now number two, we commit ourselves to others, not just to ourselves, when we pray this petition. Isaiah 58 is a powerful chapter talking to us about what kind of a fast the Lord wants us to have. And in Isaiah chapter 58, verses 6 and 7, the prophet says, Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen, the Lord says, to share your food with the hungry? Do you see how others are brought into this petition in light of that verse? God's people will be compassionate and generous with God's gifts when they pray this petition from the heart. Now I want to emphasize generous, generosity does not mean gullibility. And you want to be sure, as Jesus teaches us, that we are praying for bread and not for stones when we are striving to be generous. And so when it comes to helping those who ask for our help, we need to do some creative thinking and be sure that we are truly giving help, whether we help, are helping people spontaneously or whether over for a period of time. Number three, when we pray this petition, give us our daily bread, we are contemplating how to live one day at a time. 
When Israel wandered in the wilderness, she needed to learn this idea of depending on God for daily provision. It's taught in Exodus chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Now what could we say about the Israelites in the wilderness? Well, they grumbled a lot. And then when God brought some provisions their way, they grumbled more. God met their needs one day at a time. He gave them manna in the morning, and if they tried to save it for the next day, it would be rotten and Moses would be mad at them. However, when it came to the Sabbath day, there would be no manna. And so on the sixth day, manna had to be gathered, not only for the sixth day, but for the seventh as well. The point is, depend on God one day at a time. The same thing is taught by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34. Live each day one day at a time, because each day has enough problems of its own, if I can give that a paraphrase. Number four, we need to consider our basic needs and not just our wants when we pray this petition. Now, bread in the ancient world, and still in many parts of the world today, was considered a food staple. We call it the staff of life. And in child raising, a good mother and a good father will be sure to meet their children's basic needs. But when it comes to their wants, we might choose to give them a little bit of the extras, a conservative amount of the wants, but not to just pour out our attention upon them and give them everything that they say that they want. And whenever we pray to God, not just for our needs, but also for our wants, and he does welcome us to pray for our wants, we need to add that phrase, if the Lord wills. That is true submission to God in our prayers. We're praying for our basic needs and not just our wants in this petition. John Calvin says, by this petition, we ask of God all things in general that our bodies have need, not only for food and clothing, but also for everything God perceives to be beneficial to us, that we may eat our daily bread in peace. Are we really trusting God for our basics? Jesus taught us, again in the Sermon on the Mount, and you find it in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 27, that God clothes the flowers with beauty, and he feeds the birds, and don't you think that God cares more for you than the flowers and the birds? Yes, he does, and he will meet your basic needs. Now let's unfold this petition just a little bit. First of all, this petition for our daily bread generates a number of sub-requests. In other words, if you're praying, God, provide my daily bread, you're also praying implicitly for these sub-requests. You might mention them explicitly as well, but you are always praying them implicitly. First of all, you're praying for good government. You're praying for law enforcement and peace, without which there would be want at the table. Uh, you look at the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 6, you will find what's called the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There's a white horse, and a red horse, and then a black horse, and a pale horse. The black horse, at the time of the black horse, the voice gives these words, a quarter of wheat for a day's wage, three quarts of barley for a day's wage. In other words, as a result of warfare, famine comes along. You need to realize that most famine doesn't come from insects, or from floods, or from drought. Most famine comes from two-legged insects, people. It comes from hatred and greed and especially from bad government. I think if you look the world over, you would see that the main reason that people suffer in their basic needs is because of bad government. And so in this petition, we are praying for good government. Good government that will work to ensure the plenty of, that we need and also it'll work for safety so that when we sit down at a table, we know that we can trust the food that we eat. Now here's a second implicit request when we pray for our daily bread. We pray for the immigrants and for migrant workers who do the difficult work in the fields and orchards from which many of our daily provisions come. When you sit down at the table and have some fruit or vegetables, the chances are more than 50-50 that you are eating food that was picked by an immigrant, very possibly by an undocumented immigrant. And we need to have compassion in this area if we are really taking seriously the prayer request, give us our daily bread. I deeply believe in the need for immigration reform after the principles of Micah 6.8 to do justice and to love mercy. We also pray for good and safe transportation of the products that we need. 
and we pray for a thriving wholesale and retail market that will provide profits and income even as we buy our daily needs at reasonable prices. All of this is implicit in this petition. Does God really care when prices for necessity rise to the point that the poor cannot afford them? Yes, he does. Listen to Proverbs 11.26. People curse the man who hoards grain, and blessing crowns him who is willing to sell. And if you read the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis, you see that God sent a man to provide enough to eat for a whole generation so that they might be saved. We also pray for sound economic policies that encourage jobs and productivity. So much is in mind with the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Second, we need to remember that uh, while we need our daily bread, we also do not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus taught this, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. You and I need daily bread, but as serious Christians, we also need our daily spiritual nourishment as well from the scriptures. And third and finally, we should think about Jesus, who is the bread of life, the living bread that came down from heaven, John chapter 6, verses 48 to 51. So bread, according to John Wesley, speaks of all things needful for our souls and bodies, not only the meat that perishes, but the sacramental bread and the grace, the food that endures to everlasting life. Whenever you pray this petition, trust God and thank God for supplying all your physical necessities, but then thank God for providing your spiritual necessities as well, as well and thank Him for how He has supplied them through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you as we pray to Him to take care of all of our daily needs.